Hi. This is a video to tell overall whether you have um, a chrome over brass superphonic or not, or it's Ludaloy. And I'm specifically referring to the early 60s superphonics. Is it brass or is it not? Is it Ludaloy, which is aluminum, or not? The original chrome over brass early 60s superphonic, and I go like this because technically speaking, according to Ludwig, the original chromed brass superphonics were actually called Super Ludwigs. They came out in 1958 and they made them brass uh, in that particular um, fashion till I think 61 or 62. Now this is one of those drums, or I should say shell, okay, because I took all the stuff off it. Now essentially these what they call Super Ludwigs or chrome over brass early 60s superphonics, which I'll refer to them as that, essentially the chrome over brass, early 60s superphonics, are super loving. They would take a piece of brass like this, right? They would essentially go like that, and they would weld it. So there is your shell, right? That's what they would do. There'd be actually be a weld. They'd roll it, and, it was, and then there'd be a welded seam. The ones after that, which are called spun, which can be brass or aluminum or whatever, bronze, whatever material you want, start out as a cylinder of metal and they cut off chunks of it like this. You know what I mean? So like, so here you go, you got this chunky, they put it like in a die thingy, or like a centrifuge of some sort, and it spins around and around and around. And under some heat and stuff, what they do is they will then, almost like, um, you know, like in the movie Ghost, when the clay thing, you know, like when people do pottery, it spins around, you use your hands to uniformly sort of distort, essentially is what you're doing, the hunk of mass, whatever I have in front of you. So in, in pottery, it's a hunk of um, clay that you're sort of shaping into a vase or whatever. In this case, it would be, you'd be spinning a, um, a cylinder and, you know, shaping in, either, I don't know, with, the, with some sort of device. As this spins faster and faster, you'd shape, you'd shape in uh, the bearing edge, which would result in a flange, and then the bead and everything else. So that's the difference. Super Ludwigs, chrome over brass superphonics or Super Ludwigs, were this. They were not spun. They took a sheet of brass and went like this. Now, technically speaking, I don't know how they got the bead in it. They probably, well, they were rolled, so they probably took this and they rolled the bead into it. And then probably also the shape of the, you know, thingy wing. And then they, but anyway, they welded it. So it's an entirely different animal than a spun shell. You have a super Ludwig shell, which is rolled and welded, which is also known as a chrome over brass superphonic early 60s. Or you have a spun shell which are more often than not, almost always Ludaloy, with the exception of modern times where they make a lot of black beauties now and then Ludwig sells brass, superphonics. But for now, really for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be talking about, hey, I'm going to be talking about Ludwig's like 1958 to about 19, early 70s, that era, brass, kind of like the vintage brass. Because then they started becoming a dime a dozen later. Again, Ludwig reissued the brass ones and they had black beauties. So, anyway. This is a Super Ludwig, i.e. chrome over brass, superphonic. And you'll see here that if I were to take a cross section of this shell, like if I were to, oh boy, this is kind of heavy. If I were to slice this into a little chunk, like a piece of cake, the cross section on a Super Ludwig rolled and welded shell would look like what you see on the right, okay? Do you see how they look up? Well, with the exception, of course, I mean, I'm, I'm not an artist. But, you know, the beads are a different size, which the beads are the same size, but just for my drawing, the beads are a different size. But do you see here how this is a flange here? See how, so this is what you would come up and it would, cur and it doesn't curl over. Most superphonics look like this. The bearing edge is formed and then the metal goes like this straight out and stops. The rolled and welded chrome brass superphonics, super Ludwig are not like that. They look like this. So the bearing edge is formed and then it goes at like whatever, four, let's call it a 45 degree angle. But then it curls. There's a curl, or what I sometimes or some people call a lip. Okay? So if you see that curl here, here, it is, that is a telltale sign of it being a rolled and welded brass Super Ludwig, aka Chrome over brass, early 60s Supra, which is what this is, okay? So, you'll see here, I'll get up here. Now, it's hard to see here, 
Okay, sometimes it's hard, but you'll see, like, if I put my hand on here, see how my finger kind of disappears? Because there's a curl there. Do you know what I'm saying? It's curled. It goes, like, that flange comes in, and it goes, eh, like that, okay? That's, okay? This is a rolled and welded shell. And the seam, where's the welded seam? How sometimes to find these seams? Anyway, it's in here somewhere. They did a, after a while, they did a pretty good job <laughs> of welding the, oh, there it is. They did a pretty good job of welding these seams, okay? All right. Where am I going to put you? All right, so, now, here's our garden variety, regular spun Lud alloy shell. Of course, Lud alloy is aluminum. I see aluminum pits like this. Um, oftentimes, actually there's better ways to plate it where it really won't pit, uh, you can prevent pitting. But aluminum is sort of reactive metal, it, ox it, it sort of reacts with other metals, especially copper. And when they plate metal to stuff like this, they typically will go, it's an aluminum shell, then they go copper, then a nickel plate, and then chrome. Some people call that triple chrome plating. Um, but, um, when I went, and this is a quick digression as I always do, Years ago, there's a place in Chicago called Griffin Plating, and they're down near uh, Clybourne, or Elston, and Armitage. I went on there with two shells, a six and a half and a five by 14, pitted to heck. Went in there, I said, hey guys, all right, can you remove the chrome for me and polish them up? Yes. One guy in there, an older fella, saw me come in the door, and he was like, he's like, I don't even tell me I know what those are. This guy was missing... This much, I can't remember if it was from this knuckle on or this knuckle on. He was buffing one of these and it, and it flew out of his hand. And this sharp, well, it's not too sharp, I mean, but it's uh, on the, on the um, spun shells. I mean, again, it just go, it curls over and goes like this. It's relatively sharp. I mean, you won't cut your finger off if you go like this. But if it's spinning at a jillion RPM, it'll probably slice it up. Anyway, that's what happened to this board. Anyway, these folks said, and by the way, in Griffin Plating, there was a big sign that hung from the ceiling that said, uh, attention, we do not guarantee the plating of aluminum. So, but Ludwig, of course, went ahead and did it. Well, you know, Ludwig did stuff like that. So, anyway, but these fellas told me, by the by, that if you um, plate aluminum with a zinc plating first, then copper, then nickel, then chrome, a whole much better. And there are batches of Ludwig spun aluminum shells, spun Lud alloy shells, from the 60s and 70s that hold up pretty well, the plating. I've seen a lot that are actually don't have any pitting. And uh, for the Ludwig, diehard Ludwig guys, I've noticed them in the, um, definitely in the 500,000 serial number range, through like the 600,000 and the 700,000, um, into then the blue and olive, 800,000, 900,000, 1 million. And then, of course, the ones who they don't have serial numbers. A lot of those are just plated really well. I think they maybe they put a, a zinc plating on first. Or whatever they did, they hold up well. Anyway, so back to how to tell the difference. The main, ultimately the way to tell at all, whether your snare drum, whatever it is, who makes it, is brass or not, is to file away some of the metal. Typically what you do is you take a lug off, right? There's a lug off here because I'm going to make a comparison. Because it's a sort of an obscure place. You can file away one of these holes. you got to file away pretty good, though. Because depending on the quality of the plating, they sometimes, um, the, again, the first, or well, the, there's a copper plating. So if you, if you kind of weasel away slightly at the chrome and the nickel and you see the copper, you might be like, oh, it's brass. you got to dig away pretty good. If you see white shavings, it's aluminum or steel. If you see, it's not even really yellow. It's like orange, gold, yellow. Um, then it's brass. Anyway. Um, but ultimately, if you really want to tell whether you're superphonic or not, is that way you file something away. But there are telltale signs that it's brass. A great plating job. Brass, which is copper and zinc, takes plating terrifically. Because it's copper and zinc, and then you're going to flash, you're going to plate it with copper, and then um, uh, nickel, and then chrome. So, I mean, it holds plating well. Um, you know, again, the aluminum ones typically don't. I mean, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I will say this, though, some, real fast. Um, sometimes brass, chrome-plated brass, actually will pit sometimes under the right conditions. If you've ever gone into a tavern at a bar, like you're playing clubs or whatever, you go in in the urinals or the toilets, a lot of those old pipe fixtures that go, are they're, they're brass and they're chrome-plated. You'll see them pit, sometimes pretty significant pitting on them, but it won't really totally bubble up and flake 
like the aluminum does. Do you know what I mean? Um, but even on this uh, drum over bass, uh, early 60s, Ludwig Superphonic, which is a super Ludwig, you'll see around here there actually is very light pitting. It's sort of a, it's hard to see, but it's sort of a whitish, greenish, because again, the, the copper does oxidize. But of course, it's not at all. But typically, people will say, oh, brass never pits. Well, it, it does if, under the right conditions. I mean, it can't pit. It just won't flake. Anyway, so back in the day, especially before eBay and before all the drum sites and the internet and everything, people used to always say, ah, well, if you have a red felt baseball bat tone control, it's a brass drum. Well, of course, that's not true because there's plenty of superphonics out there that are Ludaloy. Some have crimped snare beds. This is a crimp snare bed. Some have regular Ludaloy, or I mean, uh, acoustic perfect snare beds, which I'll get into. Um, either way, there's plenty of Ludwig Superphonics out there with red felt tone controls, the baseball bands, where it's like, and I hate them. Um, and then sometimes people say, oh, well, if it, um, the magnet test. Well, the magnet test. Well, of course, a magnet will, won't stick to aluminum, but it also won't stick to brass. Do you know what I'm saying? Because uh, they're not, not ferrous metals. Testing. Hang on. Hello. No, thank you. All right. Get a lot of uh, crank calls around this time of the day. A lot of marketing calls. All right. And that, honest to God, was a real call. I, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'll disconnect this real fast. Because I don't want Luana to call me back again. All right. So, and then what people used to say, too, okay, well, if it, if it's a, if, it's, if it has a crimped snare bed, then it's brass. Well, no, because Ludwig at first, when they made the switch from brass shells, from the rolled and welded brass shells to Ludaloy, aluminum, they actually did crimp the shells. They didn't put in with the Acoustic Perfect. The Acoustic Perfect, when you hear the Acoustic Perfect uh, shell design, what they mean is, this is a regular run-of-the-mill garden variety, Ludwig, you know, 1963 to 19, to the current day Superphonic. That's what they call an acoustic perfect snare bed. Acoustic perfect snare bed means it's a regular shell, but what they do is they, I don't know, now I don't know if they roll it in or they slightly like scratch it in or buff it in, but from about here to here, it's there's a very slight snare bed here. So what that does is it is it creates an effect. The snare bed, of course, creates the effect of the hair of the snare bed sort of the snare. Um, uh, the skin bows out so the snares get more response. Anyway, an acoustic perfect snare bed is a very wide, I think it's eight inches wide, kind of like rubbed in. I don't know how they would take the shell. They would, they'd either grind it in or whatever. But up until that time, they would use a crimped snare bed. They would literally take this shell, you can see that, and they'd go just like, they go, and what would happen is this part of the shell on each end would just kind of come up a little bit, okay? And that makes a little area where the head sort of sticks out, or actually where the shell comes in, so that there's more snare response, uh, the snare wires the bottom head. But the point being that Ludwig did not stop crimping the shells. Like, there wasn't a day where they were like, all right, haul production, we're switching from this rolled, uh, welded, super Ludwig shell, which is this guy, and then when we do, we're going to... The same day, stop crimping the snare beds. We're going to the Acoustic Perfect. No, what happened was, is they still crimp the snare beds on spun aluminum shells. And here, this is one of them, okay? This is uh, a 1962-63 Ludaloy aluminum shell that has crimped snare beds, okay? And you'll see these quite a bit. I mean, they're actually... You know, years ago, before the internet and for eBay and stuff, you'd be like, oh, there were just a few of them. People always like to throw away the term prototype. Oh, it was a pro... No, there were, there were a lot of them. Yeah, they come up on eBay all the time. Okay? Um, and this guy... What's the serial number on this bad boy? And this is a pre-serial, okay? Uh, by the way, I've never seen, um, with the exception of one shell, which I'll show you toward the end of this video, I've never seen uh, a Ludwig Keystone badge with serial number uh, drum with... Uh, a crimped uh, snare bed, with the exception of the drum I'm going to show you, which is something else. But anyway, so, so here's an aluminum. You can see it's pitting. So, the test. So somebody says, oh, well, my Superphonic 
It has a red felt tone control and it has a crimped snare bend. The crimp, well, it still could be aluminum because even though the snare, even though the tone control is missing from this, it was red felt. Okay? So, what other, what other things can you do? Well, again, the ultimate test is if you can look inside the drum, look for the lip or the curl on the flange. That's the acid test. If you're looking for a super Ludwig shell rolled and welded, it's going to have this lip, okay? This curled on the end of the flange, right there. Okay, that's the acid test. But it's not always possible to see because sometimes it's hard to see inside the drum. Um, plus two on eBay. There are times guys will people it. When I say guys, I mean people. You'll see the inside of the drum. And sometimes from like certain angles, it is hard to tell if the curl's there or not. Okay? If it's if it's sometimes if it's if it's just show just so, if you're looking at these drums, sometimes it's hard to tell whether it's just that just that 45 degree flange or if the curl's there or not. Sometimes it's hard to tell. But I'll give you some insight. Something that I've done a lot over the years, I found many a chrome over brass superphonic on eBay. A lot of it, what they did was was generally there's two different kinds of imperial lugs that they use for the superphonics or the super Ludwigs. I mean, there's more than that. There were some there were slightly different modifications they did in the aesthetic design, like on the edges or whatever. But this is the common lug you'll find from like 1962 onward. It's not very, they're, all these lugs are cast metal, you know what I mean? But up until that time, they used more or less the design of the heavy cast metal Imperial lug, which was used in the 30s, developed by the Kahn Corporation. What had happened was real fast, is William F. Ludwig, senior, number one, sold the Ludwig and Ludwig Drum Company to the Kahn Corporation in and around the Depression. Um, and then he worked there, I think, for a while, but then he stopped and he left and he started his own company called WFL. He couldn't use the Ludwig name. Anyway, this lug was actually developed under Ludwig and Ludwig, but when Kahn owned it, WFL wasn't there. They, they actually came up with this. So the point being was, is when WFL, when William Ludwig I got the Ludwig and Ludwig name back in 1957-ish, 50, or maybe, I don't know, 55, 56, 57, I don't know for sure, but the point being is when he got it, when he bought that back from Kahn, which, by the way, also owned Leedy, they bought Leedy, and they sold all the Leedy stuff to Slingerland, and all the Ludwig and Ludwig stuff to WFL, well, he got all the dies and all the patents and everything, but he got this lug design. Now, up until this point, these lugs never had a, a, a bead in it like that, a notch. They did have a notch for a, period, a very brief period of time that was had three sides, kind of like like, like, eh, like that, okay? But up until this time, they never had a round bead slice. So he, when he made these lugs, finally made these lugs, he put that semicircle bead, you know, that smiley face. Uh, so it's essentially the same lug as the 1930s heavy cast, okay? And these are pretty heavy. These are actually 72 grams. And now, the funny thing was, I will say this, though. I weighed these. A regular run-of-the-mill 1962 to present, less metal. People would say they're non. I mean, they're cast. Look, this weighs 60 grams. Okay, the, the couple I've weighed up 59, 60 grams. This guy weighs 72. So it's not that much heavier. Even though my hand, it feels a lot heavier. So a lot of the weight that's attributed to chrome over brass, early 60s super Ludwigs or chrome over brass super fox, sometimes guys, including myself, have said, ah, that's because the lugs are so heavy. Well, they're not that much heavier. The shells actually are still really heavy, and I'll get to the weights in a minute. So anyway, so let's stick to what I'm talking about here as far as the lugs go. I've scored many a brass superphonic on the eBay over the years, less so now, because, but there's a difference, and see if you can spot the difference between, I mean, you're not going to see this when it's on the drum, but take a gander at that. Pardon my shakes, I'm shake the, shakes the clown. Like, if you'll notice, on the one on your left, do you see, like, the Art Deco three layers, right? See, there's that interior, and then the second one, and then the final one. On the heavy cast lugs, the spacing is much bigger, relatively much bigger here and a little here than it is on the more common lug, on all varieties of it, okay? It's, a, it's a, not as big space. In other words, this center chunk of, like, if you, here's the lug, and then the next level, and then the next level, this interior level is bigger on the 1962 to present uh, to period lugs. Whereas on the original ones, which were based on the, which were the, you know, 1930s uh, con-designed imperial lug, 
this center chunk is smaller, as is this one a little bit, and so there's more space. See, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm gonna hold it. You see how there's more on this guy on your left, there's more distance between the, the cliffs, right? If you see these on a Ludwig Superphonic, I will say 99.9 .9 repeating with the 7.3 at the very end, a percent chance that it's a brass that is a super Ludwig. I'm not saying, when I say brass in this case, I mean a super Ludwig, a rolled and welded shell, okay? In my experience, there's only one, uh, I mean, I haven't, I've had a lot of drums, though. I mean, I'm not like a, some of these guys out in the West Coast with tons of drums who are, uh, but I've had a lot. I'm obsessed with Paul's of his, you know. But I've only seen one drum, one Ludaloy drum, that had these heavy cast lugs, okay? And, it and I owned it. It came to me. I bought it, I think, on eBay. Um, but out of the ten lugs, eight of them were these heavy ones, and the other two were the later ones. And it was a Ludaloy shell. Now, I don't know if somebody swapped them out or if it did come from the factory like that. But my advice to you is if you see a Ludwig Superphonic, five or six and a half, that has these heavy cast lugs. Again, you're not going to be able to look in it because they're on the drum. But it has the more space between these guys. See that? Like the, the bigger gap versus this guy. T take it from me. It's a brass drum. It is. It's, it's one of the Super Ludwigs. But, I, but the opposite is true, though, too. Not the opposite, but I have seen a few chrome over brass Superphonics or Super Ludwigs from the early 60s that have had these lugs, okay? This is the, the more modern lug. I've seen one, I've owned one, a six and a half, and I've seen one or two on eBay. I might have seen more, but you can't really, I mean, since I couldn't physically go through and hold the drum. But I have seen a couple that actually have had these lugs. So again, I don't think they stopped production one day. Okay, everybody, we're going from the brass shell to aluminum. Start crimping the snare beds. Throw all these lugs out. Let's go with these babies. Obviously, it wasn't like that. You know what I'm saying? So, but anyway, so those are my pointers to you. If you're looking on eBay or wherever for a brass shell drum and it just comes up, somebody's like, Ludwig snare drum, good condition, see pictures. Well, if you see, again, bigger space here, take my word for it, it's a chrome or brass super Ludwig, unless somebody swapped the lugs up. And, but, again, conceivably, this later lug could be on a chrome or brass super Ludwig. All right. So, um, again, so red felt tone control doesn't necessarily mean it's brass, okay? They're actually very common on superphonics, Ludaloy superphonics, with and without uh, crimped beds. Um, uh, 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 serial numbers on the badges, well, all Super Ludwigs. Super Ludwigs, meaning the early 60s chrome over brass superphonic, I know this is a long video, but bear with me, started out life with a WFL badge or at least the ones I've seen. There are some WFL bearing Super Ludwig shells. You see a WFL badge, and they'll have a WFL butt plate, a WFL um, throw-off. Um, and then after the WFL, generally speaking, they went to the transition badge, which I'll pull, which most of you guys have seen, but I'll post a link on the, on the video anyway, which is a bigger gold badge with blue writing that actually, if you've never seen one before, it actually kind of looks like a modern badge. When I was much younger, I got a couple drums that had that badge, and I assume they were older. I mean, newer, because they looked just like the, uh, in like 1984-ish, Ludwig switched to the large gold uh, Keystone badge that had white writing on it. Not blue, but white, and it said Chicago, Illinois, and then they moved to North Carolina, the same Monroe, North Carolina. But I mean, it looks like, a, it doesn't look like an old badge, but I mean, uh, years later, I was like, oh my gosh, that was an old drum. So, and then anyway, after the transition badge, then they went to this Keystone badge, no serial number, Keystone badge. And, and of course, uh, uh, the, the very early ones of these didn't have an R, like the trademark R on it. Um, and then, so they, then they stayed with that badge. That's the Ludwig badge. And then they started adding serial numbers, I think in 63 or 4. I think 64. So you will find a lot of Ludaloy superphonics that don't have serial numbers on them on the Keystone badge, but they're, they're Ludaloy, they're not brass. Again, so my go the golden rule is look inside the drum. If you see this curl, you know what I mean? If you see that, that curl, um, the curl is the Merle. That's the guy, okay? Um, and again, uh, uh, if you can't see inside the drum, again, if you see some crappy pictures on eBay and you see this lug, 
You know, you can, again, just take a look. You, you know, hopefully this won't be too blurry, but I'm part of my shakes. I'm shakes the clown. But you'll see the difference. You know what I'll do? I'll actually post in the video. Look in the information part. I'll post a picture of these guys together, and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right. So, that's essentially it, okay? But again, if you have a mid six, I mean, now I'm not ruling out the fact... After Ludwig went to spin in shells or ordering sp spun shells, because they didn't, sp they, they actually got the stuff from suppliers. Now, I don't know about the rolled and weld, but I know that the Ludaloy spun shells they actually bought, they had made for them, from what I understand. I think by a couple different manufacturers. Um, now I'm not saying that you know, in 19 from 1962 to 19. Well, let's say 1970, because Ludwig started making some brass shells, superphonics. Then they had a B on them, which I'll get to. But I'm not saying that there's no chrome over brass Ludwig Superphonics that have serial numbers on them. In fact, I found one, which I'll show you at the end of this video. Um, so the best way to tell there, especially if you find a nice Supra that doesn't have any pitting, take a lug off or somewhere on the drum, scratch it down pretty good, okay? You don't just lightly, because you might just see the copper pre-plate, but scratch it down and see if it's yellow or gold. That's the ultimate way to know. But again, back to the Supra Ludwig with the curl. If it's got the curl, you don't have to whirl, Lee. Worry, okay? That's it. This is the guy. It's a different animal. The Super Ludwig, i.e. Chrome for Brass, early 60s product for the 10,000 pass, passive, aggressive, obsessive, compulsive time. It goes like that, okay? But, so then what happened was, in and around 69-ish, I think, 70, Ludwig started uh, making some brass shell snare drums, um, superphonics, and stamping a B on the shell. And I don't know if a bunch of endorsers... Um, asked for them and they made them, or if they just decided to make them, whatever, just to test market them or whatever. But on those particular drums, um, I'm, what you, the way to usually tell them is that there's a blue, the blue and olive Ludwig badge, and I'll post a picture in the video too, it's clipped off, meaning the area at the bottom is clipped off where the serial number is. Because what happens is, on the older 60s Ludwig drums, the, the hole was lower, so they couldn't fit the blue and olive badge on there because the bead would be in the way, so they clipped out um, the serial number area. And of course Ludwig now to be all retro and stuff sells drums like that with the badge clip. But um, but again, you'll see a B stamped above the tone control. Say there'll be a B stamped in there. And I've also seen a couple, uh, well in person I've seen one uh, on eBay sometimes you'll see where people claim the brass, but I've seen a six and a half a uh, friend of mine owns, I got from another friend of mine, where the B, it's a six and a half, and the serial number, of course, the badge wasn't clipped because it was a six and a half. There was a serial number on it. It was like 996XXX. So it was like 990,000. So 1970, 71 or whatever. And it was a brass shell drum. Somebody, they scratched it down. You could see it was yellow. But I found the I found the B, I, you know, my friend. I started rifling around looking at it. And behind the butt plate, now there's no butt plate on this drum. Behind the butt plate on the six and a half was a B stamped in. Okay? So if you find any Ludwig drum, well, especially, let's say, from the early 70s and before, and if it's not a super Ludwig welded and rolled and welded, and it's played it really well, look above the tone control, but look behind the butt plate, see if there's a B on a 6.5, or look above the tone control, or even behind the butt plate on a 5. All right. Um, and again, what I was saying a second ago, I, I do think that there are serial number bearing Keystone badge Ludwig Superphonics out there that have brass shells. I think probably what happened is Ludwig suppliers, wherever they got it from, were probably like, oh, well, you know, we're, I know to save money, you guys want aluminum ones now, but we don't have any aluminum ones, so let's give you some brass ones. We'll charge you the same price. That kind of thing, maybe. You know what I mean? So, um, again, uh, so that's essentially it. Ludwig bought 1970-ish, started making brass ones again that were spun. Okay, they don't have this curl. You know, they, the shell looks just like this, and I've owned a couple over the years. It's just that... And they have acoustic perfect snare beds, but they're just made of brass. Okay? Look for the B stamp. Above the tone control, if it's a five or even a six and a half. Behind it, a six and a half, look behind the butt plate. Alright, so let me see if there's anything else. Um, on these particular drums. Uh, yes. Um, on the drums that typically came, the Ludwig made had chrome or brass hoops, I think till about 64 or 65. I don't have the hoops here, of course. Well, they're somewhere else. But uh, the Ludwig hoops that were on usually these chrome over brass drums had what they call like a drop snare game. I mean, they were brass hoops. But there are some of those hoops, and I'll put a, a picture on under the description here. They look like the brass drop gate hoops, but they're not. They're steel. 
In fact, that's where kind of the magnet test came in. People were like, ah, I just put a magnet on, see if it's brass. Well, no, it doesn't apply, obviously, to the snare shell, but to hoops it does, because hoops are usually steel. If you want to tell the difference between a chrome-plated hoop that's steel and one that's brass, use the magnet, because it will stick to the steel hoop, not the brass hoop. Okay, so that's essentially it. Those are my pointers on finding a 1958, 1961-62-ish Super Ludwig. Look for the curl or the lip. Um, also, too, if you can't see in there, if it has the earlier heavy cast lug, which is, you can spot, you can get, and it's easy to spot even without the comparison. Once you know what to look for, you'll be able to see. Remember, the heavy cast have a bigger gap. Bigger gap slash smaller Art Deco. So if the Art Deco piece is smaller, you're going to have a bigger gap. Right? I'll put some pictures on there. Okay? All righty. So, um, and then what else? Um... And then let me show you this other drum. I posted a video of this on, uh, on YouTube before, but this is a drum I found So I'd always been looking for a brass 1960s Supra. Not, I mean, I actually prefer the sound of the aluminum ones, but I was hoping that, you know, my theory of, like, you know, suppliers be like, ah, a lot of people don't have any aluminum ones here, I'll take some brass ones, whatever. You know, to them, I don't think it was that much more expensive. I was wanting to see if I could find a brass one that had a serial number. Now, lo and behold, a couple times on eBay, I've seen a couple of people have claimed are brass. Most of the time, I, they, they think it's brass because of some reason before I've said, well, the tone control's red, so it's got to be brass. Or, you know, it's got crimp snare, but it's got to be brass, you know. But one that I found a few months ago was on there. This is it. Um, this, check this out. This is a, the badge, the serial number on this Keystone badge indicates it's about a 1968, it's six, 09, let's say XXX, and it, it's actually, and here's, this is, remember, the exception proves the rule. The exception? The exception proves the rule. I see Jimmy and Mary. This drum blew my mind when I got it, because look, it has a crimped snare bed. Do you see that? This is not an acoustic perfect shell. Um, and you can actually see, and it's actually, it's also rolled and welded. It is not a spun shell. But again, it does not have, there's no curl there, okay? There's not one of these. It goes straight out like that, like on all the other aluminum spun shells, okay? And you can see the seam. I'll show you real fast. Do you see that? Can you see the, can you see the bridge? Here, here, there's the seam. Can you see that? So, so key, anyway, so the point I'm trying to make is for years I always did try, I wanted to find, so you can kind of see the seam there, you can see that, one of these guys. Now, I didn't know this is what I was going to find, though. I thought I was just going to find, you know, a spun, essentially one of these guys, similar or the exact same as the B Stamp 1970 brass ones, the Acoustic Perfect snare bed, you know, but I... <laughs> this is just a different one, so keep your eye out for these babies. Now, I talked to... A fella who's very famous in the community. His initials are J.A., super nice guy, knows everything about vintage drums, has been in the vintage drum game since the dawn of time. Um, he does engraving for Ludwig. He's, a, he's an art artisan, God love him. But I told him about this drum, and he you know, said he's, he spoke with some of the guys from the Ludwig factory or whatever back in the day in the know, who said they made a lot of prototypes back then. Around the time they were switching from the rolled and welded shell to the uh, sponge shell, they tried a bunch of different things. Um, uh, Acousta Perfect snare beds, crimp snare beds, whatever. So, uh, J.A. thinks that this might be essentially like a trial period shell where maybe they went with the crimped um, snare bed, but just didn't, for whatever reason, there's no curl on the, um, on the inner flange, okay? So, I'll remember, these are flanges. If it curls over, I call it a curl or a lip, or that's what people call it. So this is a weird bird, man. It's a 1968, well, according to the serial number, anyway. Um, <laughs> rolled and welded. Brass, super fine. So keep it, anyway, so my point is, again, back to talking about how to spot one of these super lug rigs. This doesn't rule this out. What I'm saying is, is if you see, again, a shell with the curl, it's definitely brass. I mean, I guess, technically speaking, Somebody would say, well, how do you know they didn't make one or two that had the curl that was aluminum? I guess that's entirely possible, but just take my word for it. If you see the curl, 
it's a brass shell super Ludwig that is welded, uh, rolled and welded. Um, so, but again, ultimate test, like a lot of guys will say, well, the ultimate, ultimate test is scratch away somewhere and you'll see gold. Anyway, I hope that answers uh, any questions, because oftentimes, even in this day and age, I'll see in some of the drum sites, people will be like, you know, they're like, oh, do I have a brass drum? And somebody's like, put a magnet on it. Somebody's like, no, don't use a magnet. Does it have a red felt tone control? So else is like, no, that's not what you do. Does it have a serial number? And I'm just watching the screen like, you know what I mean? Is there a curl in it? Remember, Super Ludwigs will have the curled flange because it's a different animal. It is a rolled and welded shell versus a spun shell, which they started using about 62 or 3 onward. Um, let me see what else. Um, I thought there was something else. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching my videos. I hope this is helpful. I know it's super, super long. Um, but you know what can you do? You know what I'm saying? So, um, thanks for watching my videos. I appreciate it.